Hi everyone, welcome. Just gonna log on to my page so I can see your comments. Oh, for once my video is already up. And there we go. So we'll give everybody just a quick second. Hi Vicki, welcome. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Um, so today's one of those days where I was on track and then I wasn't. <laughs> and so all of a sudden at 2.45, I realized I forgot to do my team Facebook Live and that this one was coming up. Because uh, every day at 2.30 or every Wednesday at 2.30, I sign on and do a Facebook Live for my team. So I do apologize um, to Vicki and the others. <laughs> I will come back and do a Facebook Live for you guys later on. But today I have a cute little fancy fold card. I always need masculine cards. I'm sure I'm not the only one. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. But uh, it uses the new Celebration stamp set, Well Dressed. Oh, I'm glad they came today, Vicki. You'll like it. Literally in at 2.58 UPS rang my doorbell I was like and he stood there and waited for me to come to the door I was like now's not the time but anyhow it's exciting to get new stuff um and under your my umbrella which I've been featuring this way week along with the coordinating please just punch paper um this stamp set's super cute but today I'm really only using the sentiment it's your day but I kind of to me the sets go together because you've got the two umbrellas so a lot of the sentiments will still work either way. Um, I thought a masculine birthday card or one that said it's your day is perfect um, for my needs. So let's get started. I have everything pre-cut. So I'm going to pull it out. This was actually a card we did at our team meeting on Sunday night. I'm trying to think what day of the week it is today. It's just one of those days. Um, so this piece of cardstock was four and a quarter. It started out as an 11 inch piece of cardstock. It's now a nine and a half inch piece of cardstock. So you took the 11 inch, you cut an inch and a half off to get that. It is scored at five and a half inches from the corner. So I'm going to fold it along the score line. And apparently I didn't do a great job scoring it, but it's going to work for me just fine. Okay, so next up we have this lovely piece of crumb, crumb cake cardstock that is three and three quarters inch by I believe four inches. Yes, four inches wide. You want to make sure that the four inches goes top to bottom when you're stamping this one just because it is out just that little bit. If not, you can still make it work. You can trim it a little bit more. You could um, flip it so that the sentiment and everything comes this way on the card and flips up. You can do all kinds of things. So if you do make a mistake, not the end of the world. You just may have to get a little creative. And I'm going to take the little shoe. I thought that was pretty cute. This also goes really well with the best dressed, which I think is really what it was meant to coordinate with. Um, set that we have out right now. But I have really liked working with the under my umbrella. So I'm going to ink that up with crumb cake. And I found starting in the corner off the page was a little easier. Um, two, three, and we'll just have it a little bit show up. And then I wanna fill in the blanks. Four, five, six, and up above. Then we're going to go over here and right about there. Oops. I can try and line them both back up, but it's not going to go in my favor, so I'm not going to. Just like that, you're just making your own pattern paper, basically. I'm just going to put another one here. There. Nobody will know the difference. You could fill it. Um, you could definitely use the stamp apparatus, Vicki. You're right. It just might be a little bit harder because you'd have to keep moving the stamp over, but it could be done. And I'm just gonna grab a baby wipe because in the couple of minutes I had to get set up, 
I didn't have time to get my uh, chamois all wet and ready to go. Okay, so that's done and I'm going to adhere it. I found this card, there's so many pieces of cardstock. I actually do find it easier to adhere as I go along on this particular one. That's not always the case. But, got my tear tape. There we go. Okay, so we'll put that in just like that, leaving about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. And I, of course, put it on slightly crooked. Okay, there we go. So next up, I'm actually gonna take a piece of Whisper White cardstock. It's already cut to four inches by five and a quarter inches, and this is gonna be the back piece. So I'm gonna get rid of the shoe, and I'm gonna use this little chevron pattern, I guess you could say, and I'm gonna stamp it in early espresso. So this one, we'll see how I do. When I did my samples up, I had no problem lining it up well enough to make it work. Not looking for perfection. It's not an image that requires perfection. There we go. And while I have the early espresso out, give that a quick rub. Sorry, that is an awful noise to have to listen to. There we go. Give that a quick wipe. Put that aside and I'm gonna grab the it's your day from the under my umbrella set if I can see it today there we go so I like to take my sentiment step stamps and use the lines on my grid paper we sell grid paper just for the record if you want it it helps if you have the stamp correct but I like to use the line to line it up there we go. Trying to get, not get my head in the way for you. And then I like to take my block and also line it up on the grid paper. That way I know that if my block is straight on my paper when I stamp it, it'll be straight. Um, the writing will generally be straight as well. You are eyeballing it so it's never a guarantee, but it's about as close as you're going to get. So I'm going to ink that up in early espresso and I'm going to set that down just like that. Okay, then I'm going to put my early espresso away, give that a quick wipe off and we'll get It's Your Day put away. Just It is small so I don't want to lose it. That is a tip. <laughs> Believe it or not, put them stamps away immediately and you won't lose them. And then I'm going to get the hat out because everything I do from here on will be with the hat. And I'm going to take the block. And the nice thing too about this card is it's all on just a B block. Nice, easy to hold. You only need one block to do it. It's just, it's nice when that happens. It doesn't happen very often. So I'm gonna take my back piece and I'm gonna put it down. And then we'll get some of the other pieces going here in a minute. There we go. And with the tear tape, you really don't need to use a whole lot. Just a single piece, top and bottom. Um, Sometimes I'll even just do one down the center. In this particular case, I wouldn't do the center just because once you put this piece on top, if it, the tape was only in the center, it might pull the white piece up a little bit with the movement. It's not something we usually have to consider. So again, I'm gonna just leave a little bit of a border all the way around, about an eighth of an inch. I find as long as it's straight one way you can usually it'll be straight the other ways so we've got that piece done next here I have a piece that is two and a half inches wide by 
eight and a half inches long and it's scored at four and a quarter. You're gonna fold that over and this will become like the little mini card. It's kind of like a buckle card, but the buckle cards typically they go in under. Um, so it's just, I don't know what you would call it, flap card or something, but. Then you have a two inch by four, oh, sorry, three and a quarter inch. And I did that on purpose. I had a scrap piece of paper that worked. So it's gonna have a quarter inch border all the way around it. But I'm going to stamp the hat, show you on the inside in crumb cake. And I am notorious for not stamping inside. Definitely, Vicki, I can absolutely send you the measurements after. I can post them below. That's probably easiest. I'm gonna give that a quick wipe. And I'm gonna assemble the rest of it and then I will do the hat on the outside. So. A piece of tear tape was just a touch long, but that's okay. And I will be the first to admit, I cleaned my white scrap bin out this weekend. So the inside piece, I had a stack of about a hundred pieces that were this size. And that's why, um, sorry, it was two inches by four inches, but I chopped this piece off of it. I believe that's what the numbers were originally, but regardless, it's now um, two inches by, I think I said three and three quarters. Now I'm second guessing myself. Yes, three and three quarters. Um, and this was just off the end of it. You can kind of see there. But I had about a hundred of these. So I wanted to use them up because why wouldn't we want to use our scrap paper? I got rid of things that just were not very big at all. I don't know why they were in there. <laughs> I think we all do that sometimes. Okay, get this glued down too. So this is just on the back side. So it's actually the side with the, the white paper is where there is glue. Yeah, it's amazing, Vicki, when you take those scrap pieces of white out of the plastic bag or wherever bin or whatever you're storing them in they kind of explode I don't know how they were well they weren't in the bin they were in that was the problem so I had to fix that problem so I'm just setting this about a quarter of an inch down I am eyeballing it and it's okay <laughs> it will be just fine see so you can see how it it'll be fine um Next up, I actually have this square of crumb cake cardstock that is two and a quarter by four inches. And I am going to use the Coastal Weave Embossing Folder. I just wanted a little bit of texture. Um, if you really wanted to make it cool, you could absolutely ink up the embossing folder and then run it through. Actually, you know what, let's do that. Let's do it in the crumb cake. So when you're doing the inked embossing, what you want to do is the part that divots in is where you want to put the ink because you don't want it on everything. So I'm just going to very lightly, you can see where I've got that. This is a technique I love to do, but I don't do it very often because it gets messy. <laughs> but let's go for it today. And then slide that over. We'll pick up our die cutting machine. So with this particular embossing folder, you will want to put just the thick green plate down put your embossing folder on top and put our new blue plate down and that will be the perfect thickness to run this through. There we go. 
Oh, and see, Vicki, I keep all my scraps with the paper, um, like with the color. I have a little plastic clear envelope for every color of cardstock that I own. It's very scary. Um, but I use my scraps way more. It's just the white that seems to ever get out of control. And I think this is the first time I've ever fully purged the white. And I'm just going to be more cautious from now on about what I keep. But so you can see how that looks as inked. I'll show you versus the non-inked. Sorry. Like how cool is that going to be on there? It's going to show up so much nicer. So I am going to give this a quick wipe because I do find it gets down into those little grooves. And it's not easy to get up. But because this is fully plastic, the easiest way to clean it is to use a baby wipe until you can get it to a bathroom sink. And then at the bathroom sink, just wipe it right under or um, rinse it underwater. So you can see it's not coming up on the top very easily. It will though. Well, it helps if your baby wipe's not full of, of ink. There we go. Yeah, I do too, Vicky. It looks really great with the ink on it. It just, um, you really see the impression and the antiqued look of that particular embossing folder. There we go. There. The ink won't set that way as much. But because it is, sorry, plastic, <laughs> um, you will see the, the ink more, um, or sorry, the ink won't dry as quick on it. So you do want to give it a quick, good wipe when you're done. I'm going to flip this over just because I have baby wipe all over my paper. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to adhere it down. There we go. I find on the embossed backs um, of paper, the tear tape is tough to get down, but once it's, it's on there, it uh, sticks to the paper best. It's probably one of the strongest adhesives we have. So I'm just gonna put that on with about an eighth of an inch border all the way around again. So you can see the difference. I love it. I think it's going to look really great, especially once we get the hat on there. So next up, we're going to take a piece of the early espresso. I'm going to ink it up in Versamark. Whoops. Versamark is sticky, so your stamp will stick to it sometimes. And I'm going to stamp it down on a scrap piece of early espresso. Here's those scraps I was talking about using up. And I'm going to use the copper embossing powder on it. It's probably not going to show up very well in the video. I apologize. But once you have kind of a thick sand coating on it, you're going to want to take it. I like to use my take your pick tool. Don't push the putty out, just leave it as it is, just to hold it down so you don't burn your fingers. And then you're gonna take the heat tool and heat it up until it's shimmery and shiny and melted. <laughs> it's just, there we go, it's started now. Once the heat tool gets hot enough and the paper gets hot enough, it only takes a second. It's just getting it warm enough to finish. Okay, so there we go. But love these take your pick tools for it saves me it saves me on rhinestones, it saves me from getting um, heated up on the embossing or on embossing uh, heat embossing. Lots of things. You can tear layers apart with it. You can poke holes with the end tip. Okay, so that's wiped down and I'm going to grab my paper snips. So I find with fussy cutting, the trick is two things, really sharp scissors, which our paper snips are, and also leaving a thin edge all the way around um, makes it look a little bit more professional, 
I find that edge, we try to stick too close to it and then we end up crossing over it by accident. It's easier to stay back from the edge and then just do a continuous cut as much as possible and move your paper. Less moving of the scissors, more moving of the paper. Simple shapes are also really good. This one's not too bad, it's pretty simple. And there we go. So next up, I'm gonna bring my card back. Hi Deb, welcome. And I'm going to bring my little banner back. And I'm just going to notch the banner. So I find the easiest way to notch the banner is to come up the center just a little ways and then cut to your notch. This by far has been the easiest way I've ever discovered of cutting banners. There is a little bit of a point in the center, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna use my tear tape on the back. I've been losing hair like crazy lately and it's stuck to my tear tape right now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, pull up that backing. I'm going to put this right about here. Thought it was straight, it's not, there we go. And then I'm gonna grab my little hat and I'm gonna grab a dim two dimensionals to put on the back of it. Put one up in this front corner and one in this back corner. There we go. Now let's angle it a little bit better than that. There, so a cute and quick masculine fun fold. We don't usually see the masculine, so I really wanted to do that. Get rid of my backings here. So you saw me ink the embossing folder. Here's with it without the inking on the embossing folder. Um, I would definitely do this again. I might even try it in crumb cake because I think it would look great. And yes, it is Vicky that you heard my Agnes. He came down the stairs to see who I was talking to probably. He was really upset that the UPS man didn't come inside to say hello to him. <laughs> so uh, his life's very tough, you know. So this card used the Under My Umbrella stamp set just for the sentiment. So you could easily substitute any sentiment, but I do think it goes really well with this well-dressed stamp set just because of the umbrella. So the umbrella would still work really well with no matter the weather, we're friends forever, showered with love, because you could easily make this feminine. Um, life showers bring love's flowers. Maybe not quite so much unless you did um, it in feminine. But rain or shine, you're always on my mind. That would also be really cute. Stamp set. So I love the coordination that we have going right now. And on top of these two stamp sets, I use the Coastal Weave embossing folder. But other than that, it was all inks, stamp, and paper. So thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully you'll check back next week and I'll have another Facebook Live for you on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Okay, thanks. Bye now.